Oh boy, is it time again to overanalyze a piece of media that people have gotten over because it's 15 years old? Yes. Yes, it is. Placeholder introduction. All right. Ah! As a child, I loved directed DVD movies. They always felt so accessible and unique. However, as an adult, I'll admit my appreciation is more of an ironic love due to the chaotic and cheap nature behind their conceptions. And what I mean by that is directed DVD movies were the Wild West of cinema. You've got the ridiculous premise of The Little Mermaid 2. <laughs> Ursula's crazy sister! The awful CGI in Alice in Wonderland where Whoopi Goldberg plays the Treshire cat. I'm mad. You're mad. <laughs> and the definitely, definitely not rushed musical numbers in Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. All possibly available in a $2 bargain big at Walmart. Essentially, TV and directed DVD movies are a lot like men on Tinder. bad. But then, sometimes, just as you start to get tired of Tinder, you begin to close the app, and then you turn on an amazing film, and that film is the 1999 direct-to-DVD Animaniacs movie, Wacko's Wish. I don't know how metaphors work. Okay, so, awkward intro aside, Wacko's Wish is not only my favorite holiday movie, it's also the best directed DVD movie out there. And I can say that with confidence because I went back and I watched the Steven Universe movie, The Brave Little Toaster, Trouble in Tokyo, Big Boogie's Adventure, and Enter the Florpus, and yes, it is better than all of them. Alright, so I've got my shirt, I've got the movie right next to me, and I've got my Animaniacs nails that I painted before finishing the script because I'm bad at time management. Let's begin. In Wacko's Wish, the Warner Brothers and the Warner Sister go on a quest to find a fallen wishing star to help Dot with her illness. Unfortunately, the rest of the town, including Evil Lord Salad Bar, It's Salazar, not Salad Bar! also hear about the star and want to get to it first to have their own wishes come true. It's a race against time to see who will come out on top. So first, let's talk about the animation. And when I say that, I'm not talking about the frame-by-frame -frame artwork, because honestly, it's just as well done and pristine as the original Animaniac show. And also, that's not abnormal when you're making a TV movie for a syndicated cartoon. Instead, what stands out to me is how unique the movie feels compared to the series itself. While Animaniacs is basically a glorified sketch show, the movie follows a much more traditional plot structure. The writers created a new town with its own history, and they fit all the pre-existing characters into that by giving them their own roles and positions. And honestly, I'm not sure if this was done on purpose, but it causes the movie to feel so much more unique in the best way possible, because it feels like more of an event by default. Trouble in Tokyo is delightful, I love it, but this scene looks like any other scene from a regular episode of Teen Titans. And I'm not saying that Wacko's Wish is better for breaking out of its old formula. I'm saying that because it breaks out of its old formula and still maintains its cute animated charm, I'm all that more impressed. The movie feels like an event not just because of the epic story, but because of why there's a story in the first place. That made sense in my head. I hope it does for you. <laughs> I'm just always so impressed with this movie's distinct ability to present itself. And that's a theme that persists through all aspects of this movie, including the music. And I say that because Wacko's Wish is actually a musical, but it doesn't feel like it. And that is just... so nice. Listen, <laughs> I've said this on here before, but all musicals are bad. There's like four of them that learn how to make things fun, but those don't count. They're all just so boring. And I do feel kind of bad saying that because the industry is kind of in a tailspin right now, but it is also the same industry that made Dear Evan Hansen, so... As a side note though, I do love how Comcast accidentally created this holiday tradition where once a year they create the most cringeworthy and strange depiction of a musical that we, the audience, can't help but bond as a community over the absurdity and sheer existence of it all. Keep it up boys, I can't wait till next year when you produce the full live action musical adaptation of The Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> okay, so that was phrased as a joke. But now that I've said it out loud, does that not sound awesome? 
Can I have that? Can can that be real? Hello, is this on? Regardless, back to Animaniacs. The movie has eight original songs, with one of them being a parody of the Wells Fargo wagon from The Music Man, and another being lyrics set to the tune of the Hungarian Rhapsody. And I'll come back to that one in a second. But first, the movie does not dwell on the music. It only stops for a song once, and in that case, it's laying down the groundwork for the entire plot. And I'm not saying you can't stand there and sing a ballad, but in most cases, it destroys the pace and the audience is just waiting for it to be done. It is not easy to do this stuff and Yakko's Wish pulls it off effortlessly. Mwah. And in every other circumstance where a character is singing, they're either informing us about them emotionally, progressing the plot, or being funny as hell, often doing all three of those things at once. On top of that, almost exactly halfway through the film, we have one of the coolest action sequences that is exclusively set to music. Regarding pace, it is just perfect. <laughs> Guys, pace is so important. You don't know how many directed DVD movies I've watched where they just fall apart. Oh god, it's such a good film. I need to focus because, listen, nothing in this movie compares to the Hungarian Rhapsody. This movie has an entire song that is just lyrics set to the tune of Hungarian Rhapsody number two. I don't know who thought of this or what they were on, but it is genius. The song is fun as hell, it fits so well into the tone of the rest of the movie, and it perfectly heightens the stakes in a way that feels natural and interesting. If I was a dumber person and you told me this was Sondheim, I would have believed you. You go ahead and watch this cartoon and then tell me The Greatest Showman is a good musical. I dare you. I dare you. <laughs> Okay, so last I want to talk about the narrative and the writing itself, because due to its freeform nature, the Animaniacs explores satire in media, but usually still comes off pretty detached. Although the movie still has these jokey, detached tropes, it takes advantage of the narrative to subvert expectations and then re-establishes those subversions as cyclical emotional triggers. They establish the jokes that the audience recognizes and wants to see, and then using those jokes to benefit the narrative. That is not normal. That is not something we normally get from a TV movie. Also, something I've noticed in the 90s and early 2000s is that in edgy comedies, there's this weird trend where a central theme would be about how things are bad now, but wait it out, they're gonna get better eventually. Don't worry, because the pain is only for now. And it's kind of nice to watch a cynical comedy like Animaniacs not follow that path. At the beginning of the story, everyone in the shitty town is just hoping things will get better. They do this for a year and still nothing happens. Progress isn't made until a character rolls up their sleeves and gets the work done themselves. And I think that's a really positive message to send your audience. It's, it's not about waiting it out and hoping for the best, it's about taking control and knowing what you want. And on top of that, Wacko's Wish just always makes me laugh. Just like The Simpsons, the movie takes every character and gives them this very clear and distinct event to react from. This creates more opportunities for jokes and also allows the world to feel more immersive and honest. We get the dysfunction from Pinky and the Brain as well as Good Feathers, the delightful double entendre of Slappy and Skippy, and the frustrating back and forth with Mindy and Buttons. I almost named you Buttons, didn't I? Yes, I did. I was so close. Okay, I love you, Bye bye And I almost named you Rita, but that would have been inappropriate because you're not my cat. <laughs> the animation is gorgeous and whimsical, and if the writers aren't trying to make you laugh, the animators are. I said at the beginning that it's my favorite holiday movie, but the truth is it has nothing to do with any kind of holiday. It's just a heartwarming movie that I would recommend to anyone at any age. So if you haven't, please go watch Wacko's Wish. It's currently streaming on Hulu alongside all the seasons of Animaniacs. And I'm not even getting paid to say this. I just love supporting corporations for no money. So like and subscribe. Anyway, have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful holiday. Please stay safe. And I will see you next time.
Like from a hundred thousand like a famous guy that wishing star lit up the night and then exploded really bright It fell to earth and it came undone and hit the beast and hit the ground and it's a fairy set to me What it gets that first you see just touch the star that's all you do and then you get your wish to do Touch the star that's all you do and then you get your wish to do Wait, nah, make it too straight, nah